Right then, James, uh, you've set up a tackle box up here for me here. Um, there's a lot of different components in here. Can you just briefly take me through what, what each one is, please? OK, Andy, no trouble at all. Let's start with floats. I'm giving you a selection of different floats, different patterns and sizes that are going to be appropriate for your lake fishing. Very, very simply, you've got a straight waggler. OK? You've got an insert waggler. Note the capacity on the float. 3AA is the capacity, the weight that takes to cock the float perfectly. We've got some more modern pellet wagglers. And we've got some bodied wagglers. You'll also notice that we've got loaded and unloaded floats. And we'll talk about these attributes when we get into more detail in the float fishing section. OK. OK, then we move on to feeders. Again, you've got a multitude of different styles of feeders, different capacities and different weights. You've got open-end feeders for use with ground bait and pellets. You've got block-end feeders for use with maggots and casters. OK, and we've got the more modern method feeders in a fixed format with elastic incorporated into it and a running format. Again, we'll look at method feeders and all the feeders in more detail when we get stuck into the detail, OK? Good, good. Moving on to weights, we've got a nice dispenser there showing different split shots, the different sizes of split shot. The largest being SSG and in this case the smallest being a number of eight. So when you go higher in number it's actually the smaller shot. It relates to gunshot. That's where the actual classification comes okay. from. So the split shot, as you can see there, has a slot in it, and that's fixed onto the line by closing the shot. OK? Then we've got some different bombs, or ledgers as we call them. So that's a, what's called an Arsley bomb, the classic teardrop shape. We've got a more modern flat lead there that's used for river fishing and also for carp fishing and a flat lead. So you can see there's a variety of different shapes and sizes that we use, different weights when we're actually ledger fishing. Okay. Moving on to hooks, again a bit of a minefield, it's just quite mind-blowing isn't it? Tell me about it. Fundamentally you've got spade end hooks which are typically smaller in size where you have to use a spade end knot to attach it to the line. And you've got eyed hooks that have an eye at the top of the hook for you to attach the line to. Another important consideration is you've got barbed hooks and you've got barbless hooks. On a lot of lakes now, the fishery rules stipulate that you need to use a barbless hook. It just helps with people to unhook the fish without damaging the fish. A barbed hook obviously will stay in the fish easier and also an advantage of a barbed hook is it will prevent the bait from coming off when you're fishing. You'll also note that I've got you some different hooks to nylon here. I've given you a variety of patterns and sizes tied to different breaking strain and diameter line so that you've got a good selection to cater for different fishing applications and conditions and also different baits. You've got to think about matching the size of the hook to the bait that you're using. You don't want to use a tiny hook on a big bait. No. Okay? So it's all about balance. So that's a quick overview, Andy. I know it's very top level, but that should help you understand the basics when we're talking about terminal tackle. Cheers, mate. I'm hooked on fishing. <laughs>